Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, fellow speakers, people of Kebi, it is for me a great honor and a pleasure to be here today at uh, TEDx Argungu. This is a region, as has been said, with rich history, with a lot of wisdom, virtue, and prowess. I'm very excited to be here. Allah knows the future more than anyone else. I shall try to imagine what it is uh, and talk a little bit about it. Humanity as a species is on the verge of a major philosophical evolution. An evolution that will dramatically and forever change the very pattern of the human experience. Like an alien planet, like a highly advanced extraterrestrial civilization, life on planet Earth would be dramatically revolutionized. The very essence, the very fundamentals of human society would be changed forever. Not too long from now, we would live side by side with robots and highly artificially intelligent drones. We will be transported by 100% electric and 100% autonomous vehicles and other transportation solutions. Our homes themselves will be very intelligent. They would automatically regulate the ambient temperature to be the most compatible for human habitation, regardless of how hot or how cold it is outside. Nanotechnology would revolutionize clothing. The same garment would keep you cool when it is hot. It will keep you warm when it's cold. These are some of the great and fascinating advancements about to come globally. Life as we know it, that cliche, would actually by then be an understatement. So with all these advancements, what does it mean for Africa? Where would Africa be positioned? What does it mean for Nigeria? What does it mean for you and I? What does it mean for each and every one of us? Will we benefit from this new advancement? Will we be part of it? Or will we be left behind? The first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, third, we are now in the fourth. Will we be part of this? That's the big question. I believe that we have no other option but to be part of it. How? It's easy to say the government needs to do this, the government needs to do that. But I think it goes beyond that. The responsibility of Nigeria or Africa being part of this fantastic future lies within the capabilities of each and every one of us. So those powerful capabilities that reside within all of us must be reawakened. And the most important first step is the psyche. How should we think? What are those thought patterns and activities that we must engage in to ensure a better future for us? Important to that too is compassion the love for one another, the love between us, to know that we are all in this together. These new technologies would raise human consciousness to a level never before seen in the history of mankind. The relationship between man and his environment would also be enhanced. Nature will no longer be seen as a force to conquer, but as a medium from which to learn, draw energy, and live in harmony with. Concrete jungles will give way to real jungles as we reclaim the environment. We will stop cutting down trees. We will continue to protect the environment. I have had the opportunity to live in the United States. Like I always say, I left to go to the U.S. never to get away from Nigeria, but to further my knowledge to become an automotive designer. But 
Every day I spent in the United States, every minute I spent there, I never forgot my origins. And those origins are right here. Because I was born in Kaduna, I grew up in Sokoto, I went to school in Sokoto and in Kebi, and I never forgot the fascinating magnificence that I had left behind when I went to study in the United States. I got my courage and my inspiration from this background that surrounds us. And I was reminded of that today too, driving in from Sokoto to here, the magnificent environments and habitats that we have that we must continue to protect and pull from. We must never be defined by our immediate environment or by what is. We must be defined by our dreams and aspirations. We must be defined by what we can achieve. We must be defined by a better tomorrow. So our reality is not just what is in front of us today. Our reality is what we decide it to be by the grace of Allah. So when we talk about these, this fascinating future, and we talk about how do we be part of it, I keep stressing the fact that that responsibility of creating a better Africa and of creating a better Nigeria, of creating a better Kebi, of creating a better life for each and every one of us lies within our hearts and minds. So we must never give up. I talked to the youth today because I believe this message is especially for them. The opportunities before us today are incredible. When I left to go to the United States, there was no internet. I had to go through you know, catalogs and other magazines to identify the school I wanted to go to, apply through the mail, get the admission letter through the mail, do everything by mail. But today, each and every one of us has in his or her hand a tool more powerful than the computers that the United States used to send the mission to, uh, to the moon. Today we have the cell phones. And I urge the youth to see this tool as something that could be used to really reach out and gain as much knowledge as one could be. It's not just a tool for uh, chatting, it's a much more powerful than that. But in a nutshell, we have the opportunity to really understand what's happening around the world and make the same advancements here in Nigeria. Like I said, when I left to go to the United States, there was no internet. I was going through a book uh, that a cousin of mine had with all the American colleges, and I picked out the ones with the names that sounded good. I wrote to them, and I sent out my uh, portfolio in terms of some of the cars I had been designing, and alhamdulillah, I got admission, went and sat for um, uh, an interview at the Sogoda State Scholarship Board. I was uh, happy, I got admitted, got on a plane uh, not long after that into to Detroit in the middle of winter. Uh, here I was coming from Sokoto, one of the hottest places in the world, going to um, um, Michigan, uh, one of the coldest places in the world in, in, in the winter. But just, just a little bit uh, before then, I had gotten admission to ABU, Zaria, to study architecture. And this is why I'm going to stress, when you have a dream, never give up, no matter what anybody says. Because I was admitted to <laughs> ABU. Spent a little bit of time there, but I really wasn't comfortable with uh, studies there. I wanted something different. And the only place at that time that I knew could give me what I wanted to do in terms of the, 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 the curriculum that would be a stepping stone for me to become a car designer was the Brittany Kevy Polytechnic. <laughs> so 
So to stress the fact that it doesn't really matter what other people think about you. What matters is what you think about, you, about yourself and what you want to become. Not long after World War II, Japan was devastated because America had sent, you know, a bomb. But Japan, in a very short period, rose out of the ashes to become one of the most advanced nations in the world. They did that because there were a couple of people who really believed in Japan and who really wanted to see Japan come back and be even better than before the war. One of those people was Kanosuke Masashita, the founder of Panasonic. Very successful man. When he started, very small companies, it was just him, his wife, and her brother. They started from zero dollars, but by the time he was finished with Panasonic, he had built it to a $64 billion corporation. So he was asked, what was the secret to success? And he said, the secret to success was not being the most intelligent. It was not going to the best school in the world. It was not being the most connected or the most influential or the richest. It was not being the most handsome or the most beautiful. Then the uh, interviewer asked him, well, these are all the traditional reasons people become successful, but you've said it's, not, it's none of them. Which one is it then? Then he said, it is continuous learning to never give up in making yourself better. So I urge the youth to never give up, to continue to search for knowledge, to make themselves better and better, because I strongly believe that is the only way this nation can move forward, and we have it. We have it. So once again, we must never be defined by the challenges that we face, because we're bigger than them. We must be defined by our dreams and aspirations. We must be defined by what we can achieve. We must be defined by a better tomorrow because nothing is impossible. There are no impossibilities. There's only a better Nigeria to build. Thank you.